happy Thanksgiving, everybody. Hope you had a great one. That was good. Yeah, that was good, wasn't it? We want to welcome all of our campuses. We're so glad you're with us this weekend. And also, we want to welcome our Hernando County Women's Correctional Institute. We're so glad. Let's give them a big hand. So glad for that. Well, I remember sitting in the theater and watching the movie Jaws for the first time. Does anybody remember that? Sitting in and watching it for the first time? I was in seventh grade, and that was one of the most scariest movies I have ever seen at that age. I remember that big head falling, coming out of that boat, and the Jaws going around eating everything. And, and from that time on, every time I went to the beach, I really didn't want to go out far in the water. I saw it. It was crazy. I said, I'm not going out. And I remember just seeing the calm of the water thinking, okay, something's going to jump out and get me. This past uh, summer, we went to the East Coast and we took our girls and it was a great time. And my daughter likes to surf. And so she would go out surfing and I'd be thinking of Jaws the whole time. Okay, be careful. And she'd go, Dad, I want to go over here. No, no, no. Come close to the shore. Ride the wave in. And she would go out. So it was kind of crazy. But here's the thing. Sharks are for real, and shark bites are for real. Let me explain. In 2003, at the age of 13, Bethany Hamilton, a professional surfer, went surfing. While she was lying on her surfboard, her arm dangling in the water, a 14-foot tiger shark, shark attacked her and bit her arm off. By the time she made it to the hospital, she had lost 60% of her blood. Here is the shark that bit her. They proved that that was the shark, 14 foot. Can you imagine that? That happening, she was just sitting there and she got bit and her arm is off. And here is Bethany Hamilton after the shark bite. It's coming. <laughs> There's the picture. And that is what happened to her after the shark bite. Well, the good news is she survived. And there was a movie made about her called Soul Surfer. Some of you may remember that. But she lost, <laughs> she lost something she'll never get back. I think all of us have experienced something that's taken a bite out of our lives. Maybe an example of a shark bite you can relate to is this. Death of a dream. Loss of a loved one. Marriage fell apart. Your child turned away from God. Shark bites can be especially tough during the holidays, during Thanksgiving and Christmas season and all the seasons. It can be especially tough. See, I experienced such a thing. Two years ago, my mother passed away, and I was facing some other difficult times as well. And it was very tough, very difficult. But I was trying to push through it, and all I was doing was going through the motions. The bite was big and I had some choices to make. I could face it or I could keep living a life that would eventually, could eventually cause me to question my role in ministry. It was a very tough time. I was drained spiritually and physically. Drained. I didn't have the desire to do much of anything. And I experienced depression. I remember waking up in the morning and having to get ready for my work. And I didn't want to get ready for my work. I didn't want to get out of bed. And when I went to work, it was tough. And sometimes I put on a fake, a fake mask and I, and I did my job and I, and I thought I did it okay, but it was very tough. And I remember coming home from work and I would come home and greet my family and I would go to the room and I would just sometimes just sit there. And it was just a very, very difficult time. So I know I'm not alone. We all face challenges, hurts problems. For you, maybe it, was, maybe it was a shark bite so big it took part of your life away or scarred you for life. But the question is this, how do we face it? How do we deal with it? Some run from it. Some hold it in like I did. I held it in. The tunnel is so dark and long there seems to be no end at the, in sight. And some fear they will never heal. It's a dark and lonely road. It's a dark and lonely tunnel. And it's very difficult. And some say, well, I don't know if I'm ever going to get healed. I don't know if I'm ever going to get through this. There are all kinds of different ways we deal with it. 
But here's the thing. When we face a shark bite, we need to know that God has not left us. Just like we sang it, he has not left us. Isaiah 41.10 says this. So do not fear, for I am with you. Do not be dismayed, for I am your God. I will strengthen you and help you, and I will uphold you with my righteous right hand. You may not feel it right now, but his strength is here. You may not see it. You may not feel it. You may not know that it's right, but he is there. His word is very clear. His word is very strong, and he is here. And he tells us, just like we sing, do not fear. His strength is there. I want you to know also his, God's grace is with you. His grace is right there with you. 2 Corinthians 12, 9 says this, But my grace is sufficient for you, for my power is made perfect in weakness. Therefore, I will boast all the more gladly about my weakness, so that Christ's power may rest on me. His grace is sufficient for you and me. God's grace is sufficient to take us through any shark bite we may face. Through the darkest nights, through the toughest days, in our weakness, his power can come alive in us if we let him. If we let him in, his power is stronger than we could ever, ever imagine. But here's the thing. There was a time I wasn't doing that. I wasn't. I'm a strong man. I can do this. Any men in here feel like that? Don't raise your hand. Women may feel that. I'm strong. I can get through this. I had been through problems before, and I knew God was there, and I had got through it. And I thought I could push my way through this. But the truth, the truth is I couldn't. I could not get through this myself. I needed healing. I needed healing from God. What we need to realize is that shark bites take time to heal. And I, at the time, wasn't willing to do that. I wanted to get through this, push through it, do what I can do. But I remember waking up going, what in the world is going on here? We need time to heal. Please be encouraged by that. You may be sitting here and you go, will I ever heal? God can heal. It just takes time. It's like getting into a car accident and needing therapy. And I remember when I did, I got in a car accident and I went to the therapy and they would get put me through physical therapy. And they said, first of all, we need you to know that this is going to take time. It's going to be a process. And I'm like, okay, how long is the process? For a while. And you need to come twice a week. You need to do this and do this and do this. And after two weeks, I'm going, I don't see any healing. What's the problem? I wanted the healing right then. They go, it's a process. You have to keep doing what we tell you to do. You have to keep going. Don't quit. Even when you don't feel like it, don't quit the process because the healing will come. The healing process takes time, and I had to realize that. The healing process forces us to face our fears. It challenges your faith. You may even question what you truly believe. It's a very confusing time, and it was a very confusing time for me. And some of these thoughts came in my head. But there is hope, I want you to know. I want to share with you what I did after I experienced a shark bite so big that I didn't think I could get out of. But hopefully it will help you. Number one, this is what I did. I called out for help. I'm going to tell you, don't be afraid. See, because that's what Satan wants. He wants you to be afraid to call out for help. He wants you to be embarrassed. People aren't going to understand. They're going to look at you like weird. He wants you to think it's too late. It's too late to call out for help. Just don't do it. You will burden others. You don't want to put that on anybody else. But let me tell you something. Don't let pride stop you. You can't get through this yourself. And you need to call out. I called out. I finally did after a while. First of all, I called out to my wife. I sat with her. And she knew I was going through some things. She knew it. But when I started sharing more and more, she could see how bad it truly was. I went to a counselor. I sat with somebody who understood, who was trained to be able to deal with this and talk to me and help me walk through step by step. I went to my pastoral team, the leaders, and I 
told them in confidence what I was going through because a lot of people did not know what I was going through. They saw me as putting on this mask, but I was going through this. And after I did that, after I shared that, I felt relieved. It was the beginning of a healing journey. I called out, and God began the journey. Number two, what did I do? I encourage you to find a tribe. Join a small group. Find people you can trust, you can talk to. There's nothing like having friends walk alongside of you to encourage, pray, or just listen to you. Or share similar stories so you know you're not alone. Tribes help healing. It's amazing how many people around you can relate. I remember sitting with a few people that I trusted, that I was willing to sit with, and I wasn't willing to sit with everybody. So you don't go out and just tell everybody. I was willing to sit with a few people that I trusted, and I began to share. And this took a little time. This was not right away. I was closed off, and I sat with them, and I began to share. And they looked at me in the eyes, and they said, I can relate. I've been through something similar. And I was, like, amazed that they could relate. And we began to share stories and encouraged each other. And that began to help me with my healing process in a powerful way. But see, the common tactic of Satan is that he wants you to feel like you're, not the, like you're the only one. He wants you to feel you're the only one. There's nobody else out there like you. No one will understand. But I'm going to tell you right now, that's a lie. That is a lie from Satan. And you need to get that out of your mind. All struggles are common to humankind. God wants us to find a tribe. He wants us to be vulnerable at different times with people so that they can help. And this took me, it took a little while, but I did it. And my journey of healing kept going. Number three, shark bites can bring you, can bring a new normal, and that's okay. Shark bites can bring a new normal. I didn't, I, I, I didn't just address my emotional pain. I had to address my physical health. I wasn't really physically healthy. I mean, I may look good on the outside. I'm, I don't mean to say that prideful. <laughs> my wife says you look good, so you don't have to say that. But I began to do things differently. I, I took some time off and got some rest. You know, that's very biblical for you to get rest, rest your mind, your emotions, and your body. I took some time off and rested, rest. God calls me to slow down. I began to slow down and change my schedule. And I began to do things differently. And I started seeing that because I didn't have to put all this pressure on me to please everybody and do everything, I began to take a little time for myself and began to heal. I joined the YMCA. YM I joined it. <laughs> and I remember joining the YMCA and walking in there for the first time. And I hadn't been in a gym for a while. And anybody who knows me, I'm a very private guy, so I do work out at home. And I, I just don't get out a whole lot. I'm kind of boring, to be honest with you. But I, but, I, but I joined it. I knew I needed to do this for the process of healing. But walking into the YMCA for the first time, it's like the first day for a sixth grader walking into a lunchroom with his plate in his hand. Where do I sit? Nobody's going to like me. Nobody's going to talk to me. I don't want to talk to them. I don't know if they know me. It's really awkward. Remember sixth grade? That was very awkward. But I remember walking into the YMCA and I'd get on a machine and it was the longest three minutes of my life trying to get this machine to work. And so as a man, I'm not going to ask anybody. I'm going to figure this out. So I'm pressing buttons, and it's going, mm, 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 and nothing's working. Finally, I got it, and it was just a walking machine, and so I'm just walking. Just walking. And I began to do it, and I felt good. Okay, okay, I got it, I got it. Again. Then I went to another machine. It took me another three minutes to get it, but I finally got it. But I started doing things differently. Also, my time with God was different. I read a book by, recommended by Pastor Dale that, put, that took me through this tough time. And it was a great book of healing. Time with my family was more intentional as well. One night my wife shared with me, she goes, you're present physically, but not emotionally. And that hit me hard. She goes, you're here physically, but you're not here emotionally. And I began to change that. I began to intentionally be with my family. And the more I did, the more I healed. The more I saw that God wanted me to do this. And I began to heal step by step. Number four, I want to encourage you. 
This is what I did, connect with something bigger than you. As your healing begins and as you begin to take steps, and I took three, step forward, three steps forward and two steps back, and I'm still in a process, and it's a great process, and I'm in a much better place, and I'm doing good. But God wants you to connect with something bigger than you. Shark bites can reveal God's power. You can discover a new purpose. You could serve out of compassion because you better understand another person's suffering. You can relate because you've been through it. As you begin to take steps and you begin to improve, there are going to be people out there that need to hear your story and need to talk to you and share with them and love on them. And you need to get in something bigger than you. And when I did, man, it was so much better. It wasn't about me. It was about what God wanted to do through me and in me. 2 Corinthians 1, 3, 3 through 5 says this. Praise be to God and Father of our Lord Jesus Christ, the Father of compassion and the God of all comfort, who comforts us in all our troubles, so that we can comfort those in any trouble with the comfort we ourselves receive from God. God wants to comfort you first. And he began to comfort me first. And as that comfort got into me, got into my spirit, I began to get stronger. And as I realized that, I took steps forward to comfort others and talk to them about their experiences and encouraging them. Because I've been through it. But here's the deal. It's God that comforts. It's God that heals. And he started doing that in me. And it was truly pretty cool, to be honest with you, that I started seeing that. Here's a quote I heard. Everything you've gone through will be everything you made it through. Now, I'm a little charismatic, so I'm going to say it like a charismatic pastor. Everything you've gone through will be everything you made it through. Can I hear an amen? That's what I'm talking about. You got to walk through what you got to go through so you can make it through what you made it through. I'm joking with you, but that's the truth. See, sometimes it's got to sink in with you to see that God wants to take you through this. And you will in turn look back and say, I made it through with God's help. I became weak so he could become strong in my life. And now I can testify, it's not about me, it's about him, and he wants to heal you. You can clap to that. See, a little charismatic flair is pretty good. Actually, Pastor Craig, that would make a good sermon. Anyway, what I'm thankful for is this. When I got back into the saddle, after I rested for a while, Pastor Craig put me back in areas I have passion for. He put me back in the leadership part. He put me back with the youth. And I began, the passion began to grow again. And it's still growing. And I'm enjoying it more than I've ever enjoyed it. See, God wants to connect he wants you to connect with something bigger than you. He wants this for you as well. And we got to do that in order to continue our healing. See, God was doing a new thing in me. As I close, I want to read this scripture. And then I want to pray for you in just a few minutes. But I want to read this scripture, Isaiah 4, 43, 19. See, I am doing a new thing. Now it springs up. You do not perceive it. Wait, do you not perceive it? I'm sorry. Do you not perceive it? I am making a way in the wilderness and streams in the wasteland. I read this every day for a very long time. I'm doing a new thing. Now it springs up. In the wilderness, I will have streams in the wastelands. Don't raise your hand, but how many of you have gone through the wilderness? I was in a wilderness. But as I began that walk and that healing process, in the wilderness, in the middle of the desert, in the middle of what I was going through, streams were in the wasteland, and I began to see God moving in my life. And when I was reading this for the first time, I wasn't truly believing it. But it stuck out to me, and as I began and continued to read it, I read it every day. See, God wants to do a new thing in you like he has begun to do a new thing in me. I remember when I began to believe this, I began to see light at the end of the tunnel. Remember I told you the tunnel is dark? And it's not fun. But, but, but I saw it.
and you can too. See, it's a, it's a slow process. But where I'm weak, he is strong. He is strong for you as well. If you've gone through a shark bite, let me tell you, I want to encourage you to do some of these things, all these things. Call out to him. Find a tribe if you don't have one. Embrace the new normal because I had to. My mother was not coming back. And I had to move forward. And I embraced the new normal. Connect with something bigger with you. God wants to do a new thing in you. So what happened to Beth Bethany Hamilton? She surfed again. She got married and had kids. Became a speaker. She's written some books. And someone asked her, what inspires you now? She said, being the best I can be in what I am doing. God wants you to be the best you can be in what you are doing. You may have experienced a tough shark bite, but God wants you to be the best you can be in what you are doing. He wants to heal. He wants to restore. He wants you to see that you are a child of God and that he has the best for you. But let me tell you something. He's the only one that can heal. He's the only one that can heal you from your shark bite. He's the only one that can bring a new normal. He's the only one that can get you through it. It's God. It's not you. And as hard, incredibly tough as they are, shark bites don't have to be the end. They can be the beginning of a new journey. For you, as for me, God can do that in your life. Remember the song we just sang, Reckless Love. This is the truth about God. No mountain you won't climb up. No wall you won't kick down coming after me. I'm going to tell you right now. Jesus is coming after you. In your pain, in your dark time, in your shark bite, whatever it is, he comes after you. And he wants you to know, he wants you to know that he loves you and he's there right there. And his strength and his power and his grace and his mercy is right there for you. Just like me, because I'm someone who's been through it. And I can share that with you with a smile on my face that he is there. So I want to do a couple prayers tonight for you, with you. First of all, you may be sitting in here and you've had something incredibly terrible happen to you like a shark bite. But you don't know Jesus and you're trying to get through this yourself and you're going, trying to figure this out. But Jesus is here for you to get you through it. And he's here for you to go to heaven, not only go to heaven, but also there through your tough time. And then I want to pray for those who are here as Christians, who have gone through shark bites, gone through some tough times, and you go, I need God's healing. I need him to be there for me and walk me through this wilderness. I want to pray for you with that. But before I do that, I want to invite all the campus pastors to come up and minister at their campuses.